Be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. We come to church in order to be reminded of and strengthened by the hope of God, the power of God, the beauty of God, the forgiveness of God, the love of God, which Jesus brings to us. And we go out of church for a purpose also, because every one of us has a purpose. Every one of us has something that is set up for us to do in this world, and it has to do with reminding other people and strengthening other people with the hope of God and the power of God and the beauty of God, and the forgiveness of God, and the love of God that sweeps us up into itself because of Jesus. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus begins his public ministry, his, his uh, statements and his teaching that he does for large numbers of people. He says, repent. That means... Uh, Change your mind or shift your attitude or reorient your way of thinking about the world. That's what meta noia in Greek. Meta change, noia, mind. Shift your mind around because the kingdom of heaven, that is, the hope of God, the power of God, the beauty of God, the forgiveness of God, the love of God, the kingdom of heaven is near. It is not far away, somewhere up above the sky, not distant in the past or in the future after we die. Yes, it is there waiting for us after we die and in all places, even above the sky. But it is also right here, right now, next to you, as close as the breath in your lungs, as close as the heartbeat in your soul. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close. And then Jesus tells us about the kingdom of heaven. He teaches us about the kingdom of heaven. There are five sections in the Gospel of Matthew that have uh, Jesus' teaching in them, five teachings of Jesus. The first is the Sermon on the Mount. This is where he tells us uh, about the kingdom of heaven. And he says the first words of the Sermon on the Mount are, Blessed are the poor in spirit. So if you are running on fumes right now, if you're almost out of gas, if you have no powerful vision from the Holy Spirit of the future, if you don't have flash and charisma in your heart and soul, if you are grinding at the bottom of your spirit, you are blessed. You're still blessed because God is with you right now. Jesus says, blessed are the meek. Not a popular way to be these days, being meek. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the peacemakers. If you've ever met an actual peacemaker, you will find out that they are not very meek, most peacemakers. Jesus says, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Give without expecting anything in return. Don't make a big show out of your religion and pray simply, our Father, he says. He says, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where thieves will not break in and steal and where the stock market crash can't reach it. He says, don't worry. Don't worry. Jesus says, don't worry. And then Jesus shows us what the kingdom of heaven is like, that the hope of God and the power of God and the beauty of God and the forgiveness of God and the love of God are beyond any evil, which is why we don't have to worry, at least not as much. 
He runs back and forth across the countryside healing people. He heals, uh, he heals people who can't see and gives them the ability to see. He heals a person who is paralyzed and can't move. He heals someone who is sick on the bed and suffering terribly. He raises the, up the centurion's servant. He heals a, a, a woman who has had a flow of blood for 12 years. He raises a little girl up from the dead. The power of God and the beauty of God and the hope of God and the forgiveness of God and the love of God are beyond sickness, beyond death. And Jesus casts out demons, too. He casts a demon out of a person who is not able to talk. He casts out demons that will devour entire societies, that will devour entire nations. He casts out a legion of demons, like a Roman legion, that will uh, swallow up your entire country, they will. And he sends them howling into a herd of pigs. And then... In the gospel lesson for today, he turns to his disciples and says, your turn. Your turn. Now it's y'all's turn to go out and call everyone to repent, to shift their minds because the presence of God, the power of God, the beauty of God, the forgiveness of God, the love of God is as close as the breath in your lungs, as close as the heartbeat in your soul. He says, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons. Okay. So, today's Father's Day. I'm going to tell you a story about my dad. This story is going to be uh, an attempt to illustrate the point that we indeed can heal the sick and raise the dead. And this is not an attempt to make heaven on earth or to save the world. It is a way of proclaiming the presence and the power and the hope of God. My dad... Um, loved me and my sisters and my mother more than life itself. Uh, never did we ever have a doubt of that. Um, and I know that for many of you, you have the same feeling, that uh, you have a dad or a dad figure in your life who loved you deeply. Uh, but I also know that not all of you have had fathers or father figures in your life who you knew would love you. And if that's the case for you, I am terribly sorry. Uh, so dad loved us deeply. He also drove us nuts, like all dads do. And, uh, and he was not a perfect person, and there's no such thing as a perfect dad. In our particular case, uh, among other things, uh, we wished he might have spent a little less time at church, and more to the point, a little less time worrying about church. Fill church in with job here, everybody. Okay. You'll get somewhere where I am. But my dad taught me about proclaiming the realm of God, and he taught me about um, casting out demons. In 1965, uh, my family moved from Tennessee down to Ocean Springs, Mississippi on the Gulf Coast. It was the year that they desegregated the schools. And my dad came to this little bitty mission church in a storefront on Washington Street, downtown Ocean Springs, a beautiful little small town, South Ocean Springs, uh, Mississippi town. Uh, there were oak trees along the side of the road down Washington Street and downtown Mississippi. And, and my dad came to the church council at um, Christus Victor Lutheran Church in Ocean Springs, and he said, the first thing he said was, anybody who wishes to be uh, worshiping at our congregation is welcome to do so. Yes, he says. And the council says, yes. This in contradistinction to the Methodist church down the road, which was much bigger and much older and uh, much more well-established in Ocean Springs, uh, where people got so tied up and so afraid and so anxious and so twisted around with, uh, with uh, nervousness about all the desegregation stuff that when a black family showed up to worship at their church, they called the police. Now, this is not to say that we were better than them. Because at Christus Victor Lutheran Church, most of us 
had moved down from the north. And we did not have to deal with the raising and the expectations and the reinforcement and, quite frankly, the family threats that folks at the Methodist Church would have had to deal with with regard to this issue. Most of us had moved down to work at Lytton's Shipbuilding and at Standard Oil in in Pascagoula, Mississippi, and about a third of the congregation was military from Keesler Air Force Base, and the military had been desegregated for about 17 years by now, so it was no big deal to them. It wasn't that we were better than the Methodists. It's that we had different gifts, and we could do different things. In 1967, after our nice little bitty church building has been built uh, on the edge of town, um, my dad started a kindergarten at uh, the Lutheran Church. And that was the beginning of my understanding that whenever you have an educational institution going on in your building, you will have tensions with the educational institution in your building. It's just a thing. Just it's ever since 1967, we've known that. But my dad. Uh, insisted that this be an integrated kindergarten, that anybody from any heritage be able to come and send their children to the kindergarten. This was the first integrated kindergarten to be set up on the Gulf Coast, along with St. Alphonsus Roman Catholic Church, which began their kindergarten, and theirs was integrated too. So the Lutherans and the Catholics started integrating their kindergartens the same year. Dad went door to door in the African-American section of Ocean Springs. Uh, Much older houses, much smaller houses, much more bunched together houses, much narrower streets and less well kept. And he'd knock on the door and he'd say, if you will send your child to our kindergarten, we will pay all of the fees and tuition. It was Bill Respino who put up the money for all the fees and tuition for the African-American kids. Bill Respino, he's kind of a middle-aged guy with a paunch here and a bald head and kind of a squinchy face. He was an accountant at Standard Oil Refinery in Pascagoula, Mississippi. He was very conservative, very Republican. Bill Respino put up the money. A handout. A handout. You're giving a handout, some people might have said. I don't know. Is it a handout? Or was Bill Respino casting out demons? And the parents who did send their four- and five-year-old children to a kindergarten outside of their neighborhood, outside of their community, outside of their church, a white church. Now put yourself in the place of these parents. You have grown up, you're black. You're a black person. You have grown up in the Jim Crow South. Your parents and grandparents have grown up in the Jim Crow South, where if you say the wrong thing to the wrong person, you could get lynched. You could get thrown in jail, beat up, and nobody would say anything. All right. Not only that, but it's the mid-60s. People are getting shot for standing up for black education. Shot. Indeed, less than four years before this, the Ku Klux Klan had bombed 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. Birmingham had been called Bombingham because so many uh, uh, black houses and black churches had been bombed. And four little girls at 16th Street Baptist Church were in the ladies' room getting ready for Sunday school. I'm going to see if I can remember their name. It's Addie Mae Collins, Cynthia Wesley, Carol Robertson, Denise McNeil, 
aged 14, 14, 14, and 11. And they'd been killed in a bombing by the Ku Klux Klan, who, by the way, is raising their ugly heads again in Mount Sterling and in Corbin right now. Terrorist organization. A terrorist organization is an organization that uses fear and intimidation and violence to try to bring about an outcome politically. That's a terrorist organization. Ku Klux Klan is a terrorist organization. Now, you are an African-American couple. You have children, three, four, five years old, and you're going to send those children to a white church? And they did. Yes, they did. They had the courage. And they were willing to trust my dad. That's casting out demons, okay? That's casting out demons, and that says something about who God is and how God works in this world. That no matter how deeply entrenched the evil is, no matter how fundamental the hatred is, God's power, God's love, God's hope, God's beauty, God's forgiveness, and God's love are deeper, and we are a part of it. We are a part of it. So here are a few things my dad taught me about casting out demons. Number one, you do it out of love. You do it out of love. You don't do it out of an agenda. You don't do it out of an ideology. Agendas and ideologies have their place in order to get things done, but you do it out of love. Number two, you base it on relationship, not on plans and strategies. Yes, plans and strategies are useful to get things done, but the foundation of getting something done is relationship. Trust. Can you trust each other? Building trust. Number three, it takes a long time. It takes a long time to cast out the demon of addiction. It takes a long time to cast out the demons that lead us into depression and into uh, resentment. It takes a long time to cast out the demons like poverty and racism and uh, classism and all of those. It takes a long time. And number four, Jesus is with you. Jesus is with you. Jesus is always with you. Repent. Let us change our minds again because the kingdom of God is near. <laughs>